Hello everyone and welcome back to my introduction to C series. Today we are actually going to be covering loops and we're going to get started right now. So last time we left off with functions as a way to sort of control the logic flow of our application. Between that and our branching, we have a little bit more capability in our application at this point. But we wanna expand on that further. There was something else that I alluded to before that I want to retouch on. So first off, I'm gonna remove this erroneous code here. And I alluded to functions being reusable, right? where we could call them multiple times and have the function execute the same code over and over again. So, right, so if we make this and run, we see here that we get text three times, but this is kind of sloppy, right? Because what if we wanted to repeat it 10 times, then we have to put this in here 10 times and that's just not, that's not clean, right? It just doesn't seem right. It just seems very off and wrong and, and sloppy and sort of messy. And so what we need is a more elegant way to actually handle this. The elegant way to handle this would be to use something called loops. So a loop allows us to repeat a block of code a number of times or until a particular criteria is met before actually moving on. And that is actually kind of what we're looking for here. And so there are multiple types of loops. And the first type of loop that I'm gonna start off with is something called a while loop. And so this starts off with the keyword while and it has uh, an open parenthesis here. And similar to an if block, this is actually looking for a Boolean result that will evaluate to true. And so it's basically gonna say, while this is true, we want to do something. So in here, I'm gonna put while number is less than 10. Uh, actually, let's go with five. Okay, and then similar also to an if block, we have uh, open and closing curly braces here. It's basically saying, while this is true, we want to continually execute whatever is in here. But we don't have number yet, so we need number. So let's go ahead and create an int number, and we'll set that to zero. One important thing that I want to point out before we go too, too much further is generally, in most languages, you count starting at zero, not one. Um, and this is gonna come up time and time again, especially in loops now, which is why I bring it up. But most things that you count are actually going to be what is known as zero based. And so it's important to remember that we, we actually want to start our counting for most things at zero or have them be zero based. So we're gonna set our number to zero, right? And we're gonna say while the number is less than five. And then I'm actually gonna take this print text line and I'm gonna move it up here. And I'm gonna get rid of these other ones. And I am going to come down here and say number plus plus, okay? So what we're saying here is while number is less than five, print the text and then increment the number by one. And then it's gonna loop back up here to our while check to say, hey, is number still less than five? If it is, print text, increment the number again. It's gonna do this until it meets this criteria. And then once this is no longer true, in other words, when this equals five, then it will actually skip over this and continue on with the application. In this case, it will exit. I'm gonna go ahead and for clarity's sake, print F uh, done at the end here, just to make that a little bit more clear as to what happened. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and make main. When we run it here, we see that we have gotten text printed five times and done. So. This is one form of a loop that we could absolutely use. Now, if I had started this at one and I make, whoops, that's my bad. I remove the semicolon there. Let's try make main again. So if I start this at one, note that we only get four because our check here is saying if we're less than five, right? And so we're actually gonna hit five earlier than we might expect if we start at one, which is why we say we start at zero. Now, yes, you could technically do it this way too, to say if the number is less than or equal to five, then this will work, right? So we could do it this way. But even though this gives us the result that we want and it's technically correct, 
this is not the standard way to do it, right? The standard way to do it is to just do a simple check, a less than check and a zero based count, right? That's just the standard way to do it. This is the way it's been for eons and it's the simpler way to do it. And it's the way to not mess things up. So just get in the habit of referencing everything as zero based and eventually it'll just make sense to you and click as to why. And we'll show some more examples here of that as well. So anyways, um, that covers the while loop. So that is one form of a loop. Now, there's another second sort of sub form of this where instead of while, we have do, right? And do doesn't actually take in anything here. Like we don't we don't have um, parentheses here, right? It's just saying basically do this. And then the second half of that is while, and then the condition, right? And so this basically is the opposite almost in terms of order of execution to a regular while loop. So what this is saying is do this first and then check. And if the criteria is still met at that point, then do this again versus checking first and then running. This is running first and then checking. And so if we compile and run this, we still see that we get the correct result because we're not actually running this any more times. It's just a sort of different way to do it. There may be circumstances where you want to execute this always at least once. And that would be where you use a do while loop instead of a while loop. That's really the only difference. Now there is a, another type of loop that I want to cover, which is quite a bit different. So I'm actually going to remove all of this logic and start from scratch. The third type of loop is called a for loop. So it starts with the for keyword and it has parentheses. Similar to our other loops, it has a block of text that says, while some criteria is met, we want to perform a loop. But for loops have some really weird syntax and some strange things going on that the other loops do not. The first thing in a for loop is I'm actually going to get rid of this as well. So the very first thing in a for loop is your initialization or your declaration. And what I mean by that is generally we create some sort of variable here. Uh, we'll call this I for iterator, for example, and we'll set that to zero. So we're saying within the context of this loop, we have an integer I set to zero. And then we have a semicolon here which if you remember is used at the end of every line or as I said earlier in the series a statement so we have a statement here that says our I is equal to zero so what is I going to be used for it's going to be used for the next statement in a for loop and so on this same line within these parentheses we're going to check to see if I is less than five right so this is a boolean expression that is the condition for this loop to actually run so this could be a less than check it could be some sort of equals check it could be a not equals check anything that evaluates to a boolean could be used here and then because this is a statement on its own it also is followed by a semicolon and then finally what we have here is what we call the update statement which would be in this case would just be i plus plus Every time we run the loop, we want to increment. Okay, so the way that this is gonna work is before this runs for the first time, it's gonna say, okay, we have a variable called i that's equal to zero. Is i less than five? If it is, okay, run the code in here. Once the code in here has run, increment i. So it's literally initialization, condition. If condition met, update. And it just loops like that until this condition is no longer met, and then it boots out. So in this case, we can just call print text. And we'll go ahead and make this and run it. And you'll see here that we get the result that we expect. Just to prove that this is working, I'll just remake it. And we see here that we've changed it to three and it gets called three times. So not the most exciting use of a loop, right? But certainly one that makes a lot of sense, right? That you can see how these combinations of loops can do a lot of very powerful things for us. So let's actually combine this with some of the things that we have learned in previous videos. So we have this print text. Why don't we rename this to print number and take an int called n as an argument or a parameter, right? And so we'll rename this also to print number and we'll say int n. And in our printf statement here, in our text, we're gonna actually change text to say the number is, and then percent i. And after the quote, we'll put a comma, and as the second parameter to printf, we'll pass n. 
And so what we're gonna do next is actually pass something to print text. Now we could hard we could hard code something in here, right? We could just put a one in there, for example, and we could make this. Oops, what did I mess up here? Oh, I forgot to rename this to print number. Okay, it happens to the best of us, folks. Okay, so let's make that and run it, and now we see the number is one printed three times. Right? Still not very exciting stuff. But maybe we could be a little bit more dynamic with it and plug something else in here instead. Well, since we know that i is updated every single time this for loop runs, why don't we pass i, right? Because i is just an integer, right? It's just a variable. So since i is an integer and this is taking an integer, we could just pass that and then see it update as it runs, right? So we can make main and then run main. And now we see the number is zero, one, and two. So that's pretty much it as far as loops are concerned. Uh, there's not a whole lot to them, but they're extremely powerful and you can do a lot of things with them. Now, obviously there are a couple more advanced things that we can use loops for later on and we'll cover those once we get onto some more advanced topics. But for now, I'm happy with that. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys in the next video.